Hi, I am Sharjee Lehmat Kakri, and today we are here to talk about the thing that brings you closest to being a surgeon, or gives you at least the feel of surgery in your first year of Well, I guess we all know what this black pouch is, and we cannot be wrong by saying yes, it is the dissection kit. So today in this video, we'll be talking about the equipment in the dissection kit, the proper way to use equipments, the additional things you're going to need, and some extra facts such as rules, etiquettes, and discipline that has to be maintained in the dissection kit. So let's go and have a fun video. Okay, so we already saw this dissection kit. And uh, what I would say is many people buy this dissection kit, which is the most common and regular dissection kit available in the market. Whereas many people in the excitement and rush of, you know, dissection uh, buy a very extended kit, which is not usually needed. It contains retractors and all of those unnecessary surgical equipments, which you're not really going to need when you open the body. And uh, in this also, there are some equipments that are very essential that you're going to definitely need. And some equipments that if you don't have, it's fine. It's not a big issue. So we are also going to cover that part. Apart from this, there is one very important thing, according to me personally, that I consider most important thing after you buy a dissection kit. And uh, well, it's a funny story. That part I learned from a personal mistake, a personal trauma, you can say. So I don't want all of you to repeat that mistake or go into that trauma. So yeah, we'll be covering that bit at the end. So make sure you stay till the end, not to miss that bit. Apart from that, what I would suggest is you buy a box of gloves, surgical gloves or examination gloves for yourself because the dissection hall or the college might sometimes not be available or might not provide you. So it's always good to have some in handy. Apart from that, surgical blades, often known as BP blades and they come in different sizes about which we are going to talk further in the video. So yes, they don't usually provide this blade box with the kit. They usually provide one or two blades. So it's very necessary that you have the whole box to yourself. And apart from this, obviously, obviously your college will provide you with an apron, which is, you know, the first gift uh, MBBS student gets an apron and a stethoscope. But what I would suggest that you must buy another apron because, you know, you might have dissection classes two or three days or four days in a week continuously. So it's not possible to keep it clean every day. So if you have two or three pairs, it's a very good thing. And uh, the best website I would prefer is Kanya, K-N-Y-A. They sell really good, uh, I'm not a promoter or something, but I've used this and it's really, really good. There's a famous proverb that if you're doing something, it's better to do it in the right way. So let's get dressed. Let's get the feel of dissection hall and let's get this done. Well, now firstly we are going to know the proper way of wearing gloves. Yes, there is no definite uh, textbook way of wearing gloves. But there are some things that you need to keep in mind while wearing gloves. So let's look into that. Okay, many people make this mistake. They wear their watches into the uh, dissection hall and they say that, okay, yeah, we are going to cover it with the gloves and all. But during dissection, the gloves comes down and the watch is exposed, which can touch the body or the formalin and many people don't like it. So what I would prefer personally is to remove it, keep it in your lab coat or somewhere or keep it aside in your bag or something. Now, this is the glove box. I've opened it fresh and you know, it's very tightly packed because they have to, I don't know, put in 100 pieces or something by weight. So as you can see, it's very, you know, what usually happens like this kind of gloves, they're usually made of rubber and made in factories. So they are usually stuck in between. And that's the reason why most of them are defective. So before you wear a glove, you need to, you know, open the uh, opening of it and then blow into it to ensure that, okay, there are no leakages, there are no punctures and the glove is completely properly open for all the fingers and it's not sealed in between. So we are going to check with this one. Okay, so yeah, this one blows perfectly and as you can see, all the fingers did actually swell up. So then you carefully, you know, put the thumb in the thumb, index in the index and so on. And that's it. This is your first glove. Similarly, we are going to put in <laughs> your blue. And then you put in your fingers like this. Yeah, you don't have to put it this sterilization way because you're not actually going into an operation theater or something. So you can wear it normally. You can not take much care of the sterilization field and all, which actually real surgeons do. Well, now this is Surgeon Sharjil Kakri speaking. 
it really gives you the feel of a surgeon and now we are going to keep this box aside and yes now we are completely ready for the dissection hall or the dissection process so let's get started with our dissection kit now okay so usually two or three blades come with your dissection kit but i suggest you buy the whole blade box to yourself which contains i guess yes 100 pieces it doesn't cost much it is 250 rupees or something the reason i'm telling you this is because many people say that no two or three blades are enough or maximum 10 blades are enough because you don't need a fresh blade every time you go into a dissection and the reason is very uh, different the reason is that it's not a real body you don't need that type of sterilization level as you might need in the real ot so the reason is not actually that the reason is when you do the dissection when you cut the layers of skin when you cut the layers of muscles you need a very accurate precision you need the proper precision to not cut too deep to not cut too light to cut right to the process to the extent where you want and that's where the sharpness of the blade comes into point using the blade continuously for two three days may make it blunt and that's not your purpose actually you want the blade to be fresh you want the blade to be used to your hand because when you use a thing you know how deep it's gonna cut how deep how light it's gonna mark so that's why i always prefer that every time you go into a dissection every new day you must always have a fresh blade and at least two three extra blades in your uh, dissection kit because at time what happens is that while inserting or removing the blades the blades are kind of weak so they break off and that causes hindrance to your learning procedure so we don't want that so always keep two or three extra blades second thing which i want to definitely point out is this is a scalpel many people call it the scalp pen as in it looks like a pen and it should be used like a pen and it comes in different sizes for example this is of size 4 every scalp pen or scalpel doesn't go with every kind of blade there is a specific regulation for which certain size of scalpel goes with certain numbers of blade for example this is a number 4 scalpel or a scalpel and it goes with blades of sizes 20 to 24 whereas here i have the whole box of size 23 right and uh, yeah this is the figure here i'll try to put this image somewhere here in the video so that you can see it that how different size matter in the section kit so again uh, this and this how do they go together we are going to see in the next shot okay uh, so this is your blade the packaging usually comes with a open side this is the open side you're supposed to peel it off and when you peel it off do not completely remove the other side keep it hanged and you might notice that usually they in this just it's not there usually they keep it that this is the blade this is the blade side so you need to be careful about that and it's inside a very secure packaging so this is the blade side this is the blunt side where the blade is not there so you can just puncture this part slightly and very carefully without hurting your hands or fingers pull out the blade now notice that we are not going to throw away this packaging we are going to keep this very safe because this will come in use afterwards now when you look at the scalpel there is a transverse ridge over here which is not there on the other side so you need to be sure that you're holding this it like this and the slanting ridge and this has also a slanting ridge at the bottom they should be parallel as you can see right now they are not parallel and if i keep it this way now they are parallel uh, if you can see a bit yeah this way now they are parallel so this is the right way this is the right uh, direction of inserting the blade now there is a groove in between from the both sides and in between there is a hollow uh, structure in the blade too so what you're supposed to do is very carefully from this end from the pointed tip insert this part from back side of the uh, blade towards the center from where the uh, cavity has been thinned out so you are supposed to insert it very carefully in here and once you feel that the insertion is done you need to hold it from this side not the blade side the other side and pull it back until you feel a click you felt a click now it doesn't move it's sturdy and the slanting line of the blade has been lined up with the slanting line of the scalpel and now this is the right way to insert your blade into the scalpel 
and this is how you're going to use it you need to use it you need to in the skin you can use it like this you can use it like this you can use it from the back side just the pointed end you know usually used for removing the skin from the muscle layers okay uh, talking about the other equipments this is the most important equipment scalpel apart from that you have different type of forceps we have four forceps over here the first forcep this is known as the tooth forcep if you look over um, sorry not this one this one yeah this one is known as the tooth forcep if you look over here it has a tooth right and uh, a cavity where it goes in here so this is usually used for you know if you want to pinch something and pick it up like this it is used for uh, that procedure when you have to lift something up or keep the skin up apart from that we have two different sizes of blunt forceps or holding forceps as you can see there is a ridge inside to you know properly hold things and you know move them apart or keep them up or insert things into one another finally we have the pointed forceps they have sharp points at the end and they also have some ridges inside you know to hold securely so these are used for clamping or holding thin arteries or vessels or nerves you know when where when there is very little space and the broad forceps won't go in so these go in and help in clamping or holding such structures lastly we have uh, this thing which is also known as the blunt scalpel as you might notice there is a very thin uh, incision over here uh, very thin uh, marking over here which is often known as the blade of this scalpel this is not very much used in cutting or something it is used in the separation of skin from the muscles or mainly used to you know scalp of fat if there is a fat layer uh, you might need to scalp it off so it is uh, very good in that so this is the blunt scalpel apart from this they usually provide some pair of scissors this one is mainly used for you know cutting organs in shape or cutting things around them this is a very different type of scissor as you can see it has one blade end and another holding end this is also to provide shape and to you know sometime hold things or cut things off in your initial days you are not going to need very much of these two structures and finally there are two of these structures one is a glass slide i don't know why they have put this here this mainly comes used in histology physiology and all and there is a pin i can see a pin like structure okay this can be used uh, depending on the usage to point things out or something but yeah apart from this these are the equipments that mainly are needed the essential ones are on this side and non essential ones these two and these two okay now you have done the dissection you are good to go you've got your attendance and uh, now what we are going to do is we need to remove this blade and dispose this off very carefully now please 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 it's my very humble request do not do this without wearing your gloves you need to be wearing your gloves after the dissection when you have done this so when you're doing this be sure that you are wearing your gloves for this you'll need a pair of your blunt forceps and uh, what you need to actually do is you need to lift the bottom part a bit you might see there's an opening created over here you need to insert your forceps over there and now you need to hold it very tightly grip it a little bit up and you might now start pushing it from the bottom once you've got the above part ready because it does not come off you don't want to throw it off to someone's eye or someone so when you've got the bottom part off you might carefully pluck it off like this now this is in your hand and it's in the forcep so it's very safe it's very now you need to carefully place this scalpel down and if you remember we had asked to preserve this packaging now what you're supposed to do is remove the forceps keep it aside the opening which we had left we are going to put it back in because so that when you throw it off it should not be lying like that and cut the garbage bag or hurt someone when it goes into disposal close this off again fold it from the end if you want and again from the another end so that it doesn't open and now still it's not over you also need to dispose of your used gloves so while doing so you need to keep it in your right hand or left hand whichever you feel convenient remove the glove from your uh, left hand of your right hand and as you might have noticed the glove uh, the blades are still inside now hold it like this again now from your fresh hand remove it and now you can throw it off and your hands are still clean you need to still wash them sterilize them you need to sterilize all your equipments while wearing the glove 
and after that you can remove the blade and throw off your uh, gloves or something or even after if you have removed the gloves and all you can still uh, sterilize your equipments with bare hands and then wash your hands thoroughly cleanly and that's how we come to the end part of this video thank you i'm still a learner i'm still learning things and whatever i have learned i try to share it with you if you found that some knowledge was incomplete or something was inadequate something was wrong please mention it in the comment section if you like the video do like it share it with your friends who need to see this video actually and do subscribe the channel because such content 